Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me read verses 12 and 13 of our Gospel reading. And when Jesus came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. Here ends our text. Dear friends in Christ, all of us will or have been at this place where the widow is in our text. You and I have stood beside the coffin of a loved one who has died. And all of us know the feelings that this widow, at least in our gospel lesson, and even in our Old Testament lesson, were feeling at the death of their sons. But it is comforting to know that we have an ally standing at the gate of death. The gate of death in Scripture. Job talks about it this way. Have the gates of death been revealed to you, or have you seen the doors of the shadow of death? The psalmist also puts it this way. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Consider my trouble from those who hate me, you who lift me up from the gates of death. The prophet Isaiah says, In the prime of my life, I shall go to the gates of death. I am deprived of the remainder of my years. Whether the gates of death described in Scripture here by these and other texts are figurative statements or are true, I don't know. Will there be an ominous gate that you might see at a cemetery? not darned or darnately like those you might find at a castle? Is there a gate where it opens to let us in at the moment of death? Whether there is a gate or not is not important. The fact remains is that there is death for all of us. Death is real. And Scripture says so. Job also says, For I know you will bring me to death, and the house appointed for all the living. Death is something that is appointed for all of us because of sin. Sin came into the world, and there death came. The writer to the Ecclesi of Ecclesiastes says, no one has power over the spirit to retain the spirit, and now and no one has power in the day of death. There is no discharge in this war, and wickedness will not deliver those who are given to it. You and I know, as much as we hate to think about it, as much as we hate to experience it, when we see a loved one die in our midst, and the most of the fear that we have that one day, too, you and I will experience that as well. You have memorized Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Therefore, just as through one man sin in entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sin. There are many other passages one could use to prove the point that the wages of sin is death. But you and I know that it is not necessary for just as the widows in our readings this morning knew the reality of the fact that death is real, so do you and I. We hate to talk about it. Because death is a scary thing. 
It is a scary thing even for us who are Christians. It is a scary thing because it is part of the unknown. You and I have no idea what the feelings of death are like or when it will happen or what transpires other than the fact that in death, in Ecclesiastes, our soul goes to be with God in heaven and our body to the dust of the ground. An ally at the gate is someone associated with another as a helper. Usually allies help one another, but in this case, the ally that stands at the gate does all the work. You and I may not know about death, but we know that we have an ally. Jesus is that ally for the widow in our text this morning. Jesus stops the funeral procession by putting his hand on the coffin which would have defiled him according to Jewish law. And he would not have been able to go into the sanctuary at all for seven days. Jesus has compassion on the widow because this is her only son, her only begotten son, the only breadwinner that she has for her husband has already died, and he is left to help her out. Compassion. Compassion is the feeling that goes clear down to the innards, clear down to the liver, feels like your innards are falling out. That's the compassion that Jesus had for this woman who now lost her son. He has compassion for her and says, do not weep. What happens when people tell you not to weep at a funeral? You think they're crazy, right? They have no idea what you're feeling, or else they wouldn't say such a thing. They should be sympathetic. They should help you in your time of sorrow. Jesus says, do not weep, as if nothing had happened, if, if the woman had not lost her son. He says, do not weep. But then he, as an ally, raises the young man from the dead with the words, Young man, I say to you, arise. And he gives her son back to her. That statement's interesting, gives her back. Well, where was he? He was in the jaws of death. He was at the gate of death. He was in the hands of death. And now Jesus comes along and snatches him from the jaws of death, from the hands of death, and gives him back to his mother. Just as Elijah did in the Old Testament, by the word of God, gives the widow son of Zarephath her son back as well. Without Jesus standing at the gate for this widow and the widow in the Old Testament, they would have continued to the cemetery to bury this young man and the young boy of the widow at Zarephath. But Jesus was her ally at that moment of her son's death. Jesus is your ally, not only at death, but especially at death, but also throughout all your lives. Jesus is your ally because he has died in your place. He has taken on the cross. He has taken on your sins. Better yet, God the Father laid your sins on him, placed them on him as a beast of burden to carry them directly to the cross, to die on that cross for your sins. He became your substitute so that you do not have to suffer that death, that eternal separation from God. But he was also your ally because he was raised from the dead. 
And he says to his disciples and to you and I, his disciples in this day and age, because I live, you shall live also. And has given you the newness of life. As the prophet, or as St. Paul says, you he made alive who were dead in your trespasses and sins. The ally that stands at the gate of death has forgiven you all of your sins. And he preserves and keeps you in the one true faith, as we have confessed in our catechism along with Dr. Martin Luther. Keeps us in the one true faith by the word, by absolution, by forgiving us our sins, and naturally today, by the reception of Christ's body and blood. We are strengthened and sustained through this body and blood so that we might continue to have an ally at the gate of death. You and I have the same comfort as those widows this morning in knowing that there is life even beyond death through the ally that stands at the gate of death. Jesus Christ, your Savior, your Lord. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. We have an ally at the gate of death who is our, who in our deadness raised us like the widow's son, to the newness of life. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.